the last segment, we learned about the colligative properties, freezing point, depression, boiling point, elevation. In this video, we're going to actually do the math and figure out how much it's lowered. So let's just talk about freezing point depression. Mean it, meaning it lowers the freezing point some amount. Now, water, as we know, freezes at zero degrees, but if I put a solvent in it, it's going to freeze at a lower temperature. And it follows a very simple equation. It's delta T sub F equals I, that's a cursive I, K sub F times M. Now, M. Let's talk about this. We're, we're talking about each of these mean. Actually, let's say what they mean now. Delta TF is the freezing point depression, the change in the freezing point. So change in the freezing point. I'll just say FP. I is the ionization factor. You might read it in your books. They're sometimes called the Van Oft factor. And this is... This depends on how much it ionizes. Remember, in a colligative property, it depends on how much of something is dissolved. I'll, I'll give you an example of that in a second. Kf is a constant that you would get on a table, and the constant is different for water, it's different for benzene, it's different for any kind of a solvent. And the cursive M, if you recall, is this unit called molality. Now, let's talk about the ionization factor first. If you have a molecular compound, all right, so say glucose, C6H12O6, and that's a solid, and I dissolve it in water, because it's not ionic, it breaks apart into C6H12O6 aqueous. So it doesn't really break apart, it just, there's one of these and one of these. But if I have a, a salt, let's say magnesium chloride, and I have a solid there, that's going to break apart because it's a soluble ionic compound into Mg2 positive plus two chlorides. And if you count there, there's one here plus two. The I for this guy is three. The I for this guy is one. So when you plug this in, this is going to be three times more effective than this. And those of you who live in the northern part of the United States or in Canada or wherever you might live is you know what they put all off the roads? They put on what they call mag chloride. This stuff goes on the roads because it's three times more effective than, wait, you're not going to put sugar water. Probably wouldn't want to put sugar water uh, on, the, on the roads, but it's three times more effective because of this I factor. All right, now let's talk about molality. So this term, this, this is a different way to measure uh, concentration. So molality is this. So Molality is the moles of solute. Now we've seen that before, moles of solute. But now it's per kilogram of solvent. Very different than molarity. Same top term, but the bottom term is different. Now it's not even kilograms of solution, but kilograms of solvent. So we're going to have to do a mass to solve this problem. So these are the terms. All right, now we need to do an example. So our first example will be, let's say that I have 3.86 grams of mag chloride. So 3.86 grams of mag chloride and 250 grams of water, what's the freezing point? All right, what's the equation? Delta T sub F equals I K sub F times M. So I'm trying to solve for this. I, we did this a bit ago, in mag chloride breaks into three particles, so that's going to equal to three, times the Kf. Now, if you look at this table, we can find that the Kf is 0 0.51 degrees Celsius per molar. By the way, the three has no units. All right, and then the molality. Oh, we haven't calculated that, so let's figure out the molality. So I have, I'm going to do some stoic right here, 3.86 grams of MgCl2 over 1. Now I want to convert that to moles. So grams of MgCl2 in one mole of MgCl2. Now, where am I going to get this number? From the molar mass on the periodic table. So magnesium weighs 24, oops, turn the calculator on, 24.3 plus 
2 times 35.5, that's the molar mass of chlorine, so I get 95.3 grams. The grams of mag chloride cancel, and now I want to get it per kilogram. And I've got grams, so I'll say 1 over um, 250 grams, but I want grams, it's per kilogram if you recall, right? And then I'll say there's 1,000 grams, I went to the grams, in 1 kilogram. You need to know these things. If you don't, use the table. And now I'm going to take my calculator and I'm going to take 3.86 divided by 95.3 divided by 250 times a thousand. And I get 0 0.16, 0.16 molal or moles per kilogram. Now that number where I put that, I put that up here, 0 0.16 Molal. Notice the molals cancel. So let's get the let's do the math. Three, right? Three times 0.51 times 0.16. This could be a small number. I get 0 0.25. 0 0.25 degrees Celsius. So what's the freezing point? That's a tricky question. It's not 0.25 Celsius because the freezing point of water is zero degrees. So I'm going to subtract 0 0.25 degrees Celsius, so it's negative 0 0.25 degrees Celsius. That's probably, a, most of the times we're going to get numbers that are like 5 degrees, 10 degrees, or whatever, but this is the example that I just made up in my head. So that's how you do freezing point depression problems. All right, what about boiling point elevation? Boiling point is actually quite similar. Delta T sub B, the change in the boiling point, equals I K B sub M. And instead of subtracting, you add. Same equation, the KB values are different than the KF values. Now, now let me say something important here. You don't always subtract from zero. In these cases, you would add to 100 degrees if it was water. It would be 102 degrees, 105 degrees. But if you have a different substance, let's say benzene. Benzene, we've got it, I've got an example here. I'm looking off the side here. That the regular uh, melting point of benzene is like 5 degrees. That's its melting point and its boiling point is 80 degrees. If I had gotten 0.25, I would then subtract that from 5 because this is the regular melting point of it. And if I had boiling point and I got that the delta TB was like 8 or something like that, it'd be 80 plus 8 or 88. So you have to actually compare it to the actual freezing point and or melting point of the substance. But ultimately, folks, the math is easy. You use one of these equations, delta T F equals I K F M, or delta T M, you know, this equation here, and then you've got to calculate the molality, and you've got to play a little mathematics to get the answer, and well, there you have it. Molality, colligative property, question.